you take away all the photos that are splashed across media of next, and it's my child dying on that bathroom floor. A more you know, woke school board would see the death of a child and work to make sure it never happens again. Not this board. My personal experience that I've dealt with bullying with my own teenage son through Owasso, telling me he was called a fag today, that he was called gay for having an earring, even being degraded by another teen, and the teacher knew but didn't report it anything. I cannot allow my child to keep getting bullied. And if y'all won't stand up and say anything for him, I will. My son has been bullied all year where nothing has been done. We've made reports, all that stuff, and nothing's been done. They get picked on because I'm a lesbian mother. Like, how fair is that to my child? Many students, especially those of the LGBTQ community, have come forward with their own disturbing stories about their experiences with the school officials since Nexus passing. So I'm here in Tulsa, <laughs> and I am exhausted. I had to get up at 3.45, 4 a.m. to get out here. I am just a zombie right now. So I have to finish writing my speech for tonight, and I also have to get some sleep. So I'm gonna be back and making complete sentences in just a few hours. Everybody out here deserves a voice. Next deserved a voice. We could have prevented this, and instead, we're making children feel when they're part of this community that unless you fit in this bubble, we don't want you around. As a parent of children in the community, I'm outraged because you take away the name and you take away all the photos that are splashed across media of next, and it's my child dying on that bathroom floor. It's everyone's child whose life was taken and everybody needs to see that and everybody needs to speak up. They need to use their voice or it's not if we're gonna to continue to see tragedy, it's when is the next one coming. This is the state that appointed Chaya Rachik, the head of Libs of TikTok, as a school board member. I, and she, and then- I don't even see how that is legal. <laughs> so my school district is the Edmond School District. It's creepy, but five years ago, I stood before him talking about this issue, bullying, and where it was leading and all the violence going on and doing something about it. And if they didn't, tragedies were coming. And they did, we had students take their lives. We haven't experienced what Owasso has experienced with the student being beat to death, but beatings do go on in our school. Owasso itself is dealing with 30 plus students right now that feel like they're in danger since this happened, that are part of the LGBTQ community. There's so many people in Oklahoma caught up in this whole, like you said, you're gonna go to hell if you don't fit in this bubble, that yeah. they don't wanna do anything. They want us just to go away and we're not going away. Someone has died. You're gonna love this. Um, I go to school boards across the and the country, and the, the big talking point is, well, you know, I mean, hey, I I'm totally fine with the LGBTQ. I mean, you know, be whatever you want, but you know, the flags and that stuff. I mean, what place does that have in school, really? What right? place and does the American flag have in school? It's the same to me. It's a community coming together. So. One group is okay, but the next isn't. We can honor one flag, but we can't honor them all. No, I don't think so. I think we should be accepting of everybody. It's like in our district, Edmond, years ago, they tried to put together an LGBTQ club. They didn't allow it. They wouldn't accept it. And that was years ago when my first child was in school and they just were looking for a community to belong to. It shouldn't take this tragedy for us to start saying, oh, well, we're really for you, but only if you stand over here in the closet. Only if you stand back in the closet, yeah. Exactly. Thank you so much. Takes us to item four, comments from the public regarding agenda items. I understand we have one speaker, Mr. Walter Masterson. Mr. Masterson. A more you know, woke school board would see the death of a child and work to make sure it never happens again. Not this board. This board sees a dead kid and says, that's a good start because this school board uh, signed up to protect all children. And by all children, they mean these children, not so much these children. Hate us if you want, but you know we're the good guys. We wanna let kids be kids and there's nothing more unnatural than a teenager experimenting with their identity. It has never happened before and should be punished. We're the good guys. We'll spit on a kid's grave, blame the parents and tell our teenagers to hit them harder. <laughs> We're the good guys. When we heard that a trans child had been beaten to death, 
Our state senator, Tom Woods, immediately released a statement. Um, we don't want that filth in Oklahoma. <laughs> we can call children filth, even the dead ones, because you know we're the good guys. Right? And if we're wrong, if God doesn't want us driving off the lepers and deviants and worshiping the bankers, if our God doesn't want us casting the first stone, if our God doesn't want us loving people despite their differences, well, if we're wrong, then I guess I'll see you all in hell. Thank you. I am a proud lesbian mother. Um, my personal experience that I've dealt with bullying with my own teenage son through Owasso since last year of moving here. Where do I begin? Getting, I'm gonna try to do this. Um, where do I begin? Him coming home telling me he was called a fag today, that he was called gay for having an earring, even being degraded by another teen, and the teacher knew but didn't report it anything to the principal or myself, yet told that kid's parents. This certain kid has been telling my son to call him daddy, that my child was his bitch. To me, that's something I should know. Also, no repercussions for the bully. My child doesn't fit the social norm because he wants to just be himself. The bullying still continues. Since speaking up about our experiences, so many other parents and people have stepped up with stories that I can't even imagine, including of a first grader at Bailey that she has expressed her daughter has been tormented, bruises, scratches, and what does the school do? They victim blame her. Our children are hurting. They are all screaming for help. When will you hear them? I don't want another beautiful soul taken too soon. There has to be a change. Just because these children do not fit your social norm of others do does not mean that their life is any less than yours. And also, I have a question. This fight took place, and those, two, those students were in in-school suspension. Where was the supervision? That's what scares me to send my kid to school, is that they were in school suspension, and nothing was done. Nothing. Nothing. It should have never happened. And I'll keep speaking up about the bullying until it stops. And the school can get tired of me because I've already filed police reports through Rogers County and I'll keep doing it. But I cannot allow my child to keep getting bullied. And if y'all won't stand up and say anything for him, I will. I will be his voice. I will be any other child's voice. And that's all I have to say because honestly, y'all can sit there. And I think a few of y'all are taking this in. But honestly, as a parent, you don't know what it's like to step in our shoes with a child that doesn't fit the social norm, that you are scared to death that you're going to come home, and honestly, they're going to take their own life because they're called gay and faggot, and they don't understand. It's not fair for them. They deserve to go to school. They deserve to learn just like everybody else. And what there needs to be more consequences. Because for this bully to degrade my son for a year and call him his bitch for a year, and I will say it because if the teenager said it, I will. That is not okay. And the teacher knew it. And the teacher let it go. So, you know, I look at it as next could have been my child because y'all didn't do your job. You didn't do your job. You want to say you did your job, but you don't. Because until you come home and your kid's on the floor crying because he doesn't know what else to do because there's so many emotions because he can't even walk down the hallway without getting shoved or pushed because of all these bullies. And y'all won't do anything about it. So that is my, that is my, when is it going to stop? Because us parents are fearful for our children to be in your care. Uh, next speaker, Leanne Wilson. Hi, I'm Leanne Wilson, and I'm a mother of three children in the Owasso schools. And I'm also a member of the LBGTQ community. 
I want to first start off with my son. Um, my son has been bullied all year where nothing has been done. Um, we've had, we've made reports, all that stuff, and nothing's been done. Um, and nothing has been taken serious until now after a student's death, which brought the light on the community with the bullying and how it's being ignored and not taken seriously. It took a stu student dying for y'all to see something is wrong when it's been a huge issue for a long time. I've had many mothers students, previous students come to me to discuss with me all the bullying that they've been subjected to. And it's been going on for a very, very long time. I've had a mother discuss to me that she had a sixth grader. The sixth grader was being bullied. Uh, they brought it up to the counselor. They brought it up to the principal. Nothing was done. Um, the child was still being bullied. Um, the parents feared for the ch child safety, so they didn't know what to do, so they removed their children or their child from the bus. Another mom reported um, that her son uh, also went to the sixth grade center. After three years, three years of bullying, nothing was done. She removed her child from Owasso schools. My question to you guys is, what does zero tolerance policy mean? Because I looked it up and I have the proper definition and it means a policy of giving the most severe punishment possible to every person who commits a crime or breaks a rule. Are you guys following that? Because you're not. Because if you guys were following that, we wouldn't have these bullying cases going on. I wouldn't have to worry going home with my children crying. They get picked on because I'm a lesbian mother. Like, how fair is that to my child? I have two little ones that are in school right now, and I'm scared. I keep hearing horrible things about the sixth grade center, the seventh grade center, the eighth grade, and the high school because I'm here and I'm seeing it. But the thing is, zero tolerance, like, what is that? You guys don't stand up to your guys' policy, so why put it in your policy? It is not up to the bully's parents to keep check of my children, to keep my children safe. When my children walk into your schools, it is your job to keep my children safe. And that's not happening. Look what's going on right now. So I think you guys really need to think about either taking that zero tolerance policy out of your guys' policy because it's not there, it's not being followed. Either take that out or stand up for it. Be about it. You know, I get told all the time, it's all talk until you take action. I'm a person that lives up to that. I take the action. But the thing is, is you guys today need to take that action. And our kids need to be safe. And I do not feel that my children are safe in your guys' schools. And I will continue to fight for that. Again, thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, my name is Madison Hutton. I'm a 2019 Owasso High School graduate and a proud member of the LGBTQIA community. The brutal assault on Next Benedict on our school premises and the subsequent lack of adequate response is a stain on our conscience that cannot be ignored. I did not have the pleasure of knowing Next Benedict. However, many of, many of us have been Next Benedict at the hands of Owasso Public Schools. Next's story is not isolated. Many students, especially those of the LGBTQ community, have come forward with their own disturbing stories about their experiences with the school officials since Next's passing. This just goes to show that Nexus story is not an isolated incident. It is a reflection of a larger problem, a problem of systemic bullying, discrimination, and lack of accountability. For far too long, you have allowed bullies to roam the hallways, teachers and students alike. You have reiterated the notion that if a cisgendered white individual wanted to wreak havoc on others, they are able to do so without fear of any major repercussions. For far too long, you have failed to hold individuals and institutions accountable for their role in perpetuating this culture of cruelty within your walls. 
This is not just a failure of your duty to protect our students, but a gross injustice that demands accountability and change. In the wake of this tragedy, instead of stepping up to address the systemic issues at place, Owasso Public School officials have resorted to victim blaming publicly, which is a familiar role for all individuals and minority groups. We are told, if you were bullied so badly, why didn't you fight back? And in the next breath, if you wouldn't have fought back, this never would have happened. We are forced to play a rigged game of your creation. Let me be very clear, we will not allow this to continue. We will not allow Nex's memory to be tarnished by negligence and indifference. We must ask you, where does it end? Who will be held responsible for ensuring the safety and well-being of our students? Who, why are protective protocols not being followed diligently? And when will you, as our trusted school officials, put an end to bullying and discrimination by all students? Today, I bring forth a petition signed by disturbed and enraged citizens across the nation, many of which are in this room, demanding justice for Nex Benedict. We demand that Owasso Public Schools erect a memorial park bench in Nex's honor, placed prominently on the school grounds and funded entirely by the school district. This bench will serve as a lasting tribute to Nex's memory as their story will not be silenced or forgotten. Our demands do not stop there. We demand accountability. We demand transparency. We demand an end to bigotry and discrimination within our schools. And most importantly, we demand action. Bullying is not just a harmless rite of passage for students. It does not simply toughen our skin. It is a scourge that can have devastating, life-altering consequences. And in Nex's case, it cost them their life. We owe it to Nex and to every student that walks within our school doors to create a safer, more inclusive environment. We owe it to Nex to continue to say their name. Let us come together, as not just as educators and students, but as advocates for change. Let us stand in solidarity with the LGBTQ community and reaffirm our commitment to protecting all students, regardless of race, gender identity, and sexual orientation. Now I direct this to the young people who are attending tonight. You have an opportunity to be better, to unlearn bigotry, to relearn acceptance. I refuse to accept that this is who we are. We are powerful because we have survived. Nexus Benedict, Next Benedict's memory will live on through our actions and let us honor them by ensuring that their death was not in vain. Hope will never be silent. Let us rise to the occasion, let us stand together as one community and in one voice say that bullying will not be tolerated in our schools. Thank you. As a queer, non-binary Oklahoma native, I'd like to begin my address by stating how unequivocally grateful I am to have not attended Owasso Public Schools. If recent events are anything to go by, then Owasso Public Schools would have been a death sentence for me. I barely survived public school as it is 20 years ago, when I didn't even have the terminology to articulate my identity correctly. It is incredibly disheartening to me to see how little the American public school systems have changed their actual real life stance on bullying over the years. You may do lip service to anti-bullying policies. You may pat yourselves on the back for having, quote, better policies in place than in the past, but rarely do we see any real measurable action taken, especially when the victims are queer students. I had to not just change schools, but move states to escape my bullies and find some peace at school. At my old school, it didn't matter how many times I reported the bullying, or how many teachers saw it, or even if I was being actively stalked by another student. There was never anything they could do, or it was their word against yours, or worse of all, was I sure I wasn't just being too sensitive? Next deserved so much better. It was your job to protect them, to ensure that their learning environment was safe, and you failed. There is no denying that fact. You have failed in your task. You have allowed the prejudice and hate so sadly prevalent in what should be a neutral and, dare I say, sacred place of learning and education to end the life of one of your students, with the official response to the attack itself boiling down to a tepid and apathetic seek medical help. Oh, and the advice to seek medical help was given out of an abundance of caution. How incredibly gracious of you to be so abundant with your caution as to give advice. 
yet at the same time so miserly with your actions as to not have protected them in the first place. As the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. I don't give a tinker's damn, as my grandmother would say, about what the school's official policies against bullying are. Because at the end of the day, what matters isn't whether or not you say you are against bullying, but rather what you do about it. All the anti-bullying policies in the world don't matter a single groat if you refuse to take action and allow the behavior to not only continue but to escalate to full-blown physical violence. And I know what no small number of you are thinking right now, that bullying is just a fact of life. No, it isn't. Bullying is a choice that people make, a deliberate behavior that people choose to engage in. It is not some instinctive drive that must be obeyed like hunger or thirst. And it is entirely possible to erase it if we actually put in the simple effort to do something about it, to teach our kids something valuable and lifelong, that other people deserve to be treated with care and respect just like we wish to be ourselves. Does the golden rule ring any bells? In conclusion, do better. Be better. The, give these kids a chance not just to survive your schools, but to thrive in them. Queer kids deserve safe and happy lives just as much as the straight ones do. If you listened to me, thank you. Next speaker, Aaron Horst. Hope I didn't mispronounce your name. I'll speak quickly, I have a lot to say. I know that most people are quick to come up here and stand and tell you when they are mad at you, but not when you've done a good job. I know most, if not all of you, have received death threats along with rude, hateful emails, phone calls, and I have listened to you get bullied here tonight. Thought we would have learned better since COVID, but how quickly we forget. As I stated, I've spoken to this administration, but it is not fair of us to come here and complain and not give credit when credit is due. I say all of this to say I would like to commend the administration for the handling of this current situation. It's been very tragic, very intense, emotionally, legally, politically, uh, and this administration as a whole has done a fantastic job in keeping us informed about the things we need to know, keeping quiet about the things we cannot know at times, or at this time, and dismantling information or dismantling any false information. You have also continued to support and protect our children in countless ways. Many people in this community and in this room have spoken against the school in regards to anti-bullying policy. I asked the people, what would you have the school system do? I've actually not heard a solution in the room tonight. Uh, you can't put cam cameras in bathrooms. Other schools have used bathroom monitors and been accused of sexual misconduct. Private bathrooms are not only expensive, but the sheer privacy alone leads to the risk of on-campus on drugs, sex, and suicide. As a former foster parent and educator, I can tell you that bullying is learned. In many cases, I have personally seen that a child that bullies is often living in a bad situation at home. They may have been abused verbally, physically, mentally, uh, sexually, or even sexually. They may have had an incarcerated parent or may have been a foster kid. They may be living in drug-filled environments. The list goes on. The school system cannot stop kids from saying mean and hurtful things. Keep in mind that even though these people are tall, they are still just kids. I agree that bullying should not be tolerated in our schools, but you can't look at just the child or just the side of a child that identifies with a specific demographic and assume that they were the victim. We don't know what really happened in the bathroom that day or who bullied who. We have only heard one side of the story and none of us were there. Remember that bullying is quite often a two-way street and there are two sides to every story. I can speak personally to this as I was the victim of bullying in high school. That's bullying. We were leaving an away football game and I was physically assaulted by three students from the school we were visiting for being a male cheerleader. Uh, the police officers at that local school and the school administrators pulled the kids off of me so they were first-hand witnesses. The school, that, uh, the school and the local police department did nothing to these kids. One of the kids was actually 18 years old and had graduated the year prior. None of them were disciplined or arrested. That is what I call poor policy and discrimination. We are all passionate about education. I hate that we've had to put that to the side to deal with this situation. We should not have to be saddened by the loss of a child in our community. We should not have to be in the national spotlight over false information about what may or may not be a hate crime. We should not have to deal with Westboro Baptist Church and their preaching, preaching about a false, hate-filled God that's dressed up to look like the God of the Bible. That is not the one true God, the God that loves us all, all of his children. 
He may disagree with you, but he still loves you and he accepts you. Jesus welcomes you into heaven regardless of your sins. We are all sinners, including myself, but we can all go to heaven. Our school administration should be focusing on education, but in the midst of a very delicate, unprecedented situation, you have all risen to the occasion and, I, and have done a fantastic job. I look forward and pray, to the, pray for the day that we can all put this behind us so you can continue to focus on what you came here to do. Educate the young minds of the city of Owasso. Please keep up the good work. Thank you again for your time and God bless. My name is Kylan Durant, he, him. At the re request and with the help of a concerned Owasso parent, I'm here speaking on behalf of Oklahoma Pride Alliance. I assume this request came because, because our organization stands as hope in the midst of such a heavy time for Oklahoma. The responsibility of that hope is not one we take lightly. However, what is most important is that to us LGBTQIA plus kids in Oklahoma feel hope. When we look at the statistics, we quickly realize why that hope is important, especially now. A national survey on LGBTQ youth tells us that 45% of queer youth seriously consider attempting suicide, and one in five trans or non-binary youth actually attempted suicide in the past year. And that number goes up when we talk specifically about black, brown, and indigenous queer youth. Additionally, 37% of trans and non-binary youth reported that they have been physically threatened or harmed due to their gender identity. 71% of trans and non-binary youth reported experiencing discrimination based on their gender identity. Impressionable. We often hear kids are impressionable. The impressions we plan, we plan to make for the children of Oklahoma is that they are seen and supported no matter who they are, where they come from, how they identify, or who they love. My impression growing up was being from Oklahoma, you can be an astronaut like Shannon Lucid, a world-class prima ballerina like the five moons depicted inside our capital's rotunda, a teacher, nurse, farmer, rancher, a Grammy award-winning artist, a Tony award-winning actor, a person that rushes, rushes towards disaster like Oklahomans did on April 19th, 1995, or serve our country to protect people you'll never meet like the estimated 300,000 Oklahomans who have served our armed forces. Oklahoma is for everyone. Y'all means all. That's the impression I got, and I want every student to know. So let's leave the impression that no matter where they come from, who they are, what they look like, or how they identify, the children of Oklahoma's schools can reach those places and be whatever they dream to be as who they authentically are. That's the impression we want. And speaking of impressions, hope, and statistics, Having just one accepting adult in a kid's life can reduce the risk of suicide attempt by up to 40%. Let's be a community full of accepting adults for our youth. Thank you. So I'm back in New York now. I'm almost done editing this video. I've got to admit, so I was wrong. The biggest thing I worried about when I did this, I was expecting to get flack from my own people saying, don't bring your brand of goofy satire into a situation like this. I did not expect to be getting yelled at and ratioed online by people denying Nex Benedict's death. I had no idea how conservatives were going to treat this situation. I absolutely did not expect them to call her death a suicide and an overdose and yell at me, yell at me for calling it an assault, a murder. I've spent a lot of time in spaces with these people. There's not much that shocks me. This, <laughs> pretty shocking. You know what, let's just, let's just do the logic. Okay, so according to, I know, so the real criminals here are the people that indoctrinated Next Benedict. And had they not indoctrinated her, she'd still be alive. Great logic. Wonderful logic. So had Nex Benedict not, uh, had, the, had them not, had Nex Benedict not have had the awareness of being non-binary, they would still be alive today because they would just fit perfectly into the sex gender binary and no one would have had a problem with it. Also, she wasn't murdered. It was an overdose. And the left made her overdose. Flawless logic. The medical examiner ruled this 
an overdose. The funny part is there are so many people, they don't believe the election. They don't believe in the vaccine. They don't believe in doctors. Doctors are lying. Epidemiologists are lying. Virologists are lying. Immunologists, they're all lying. But a random medical examiner is like, yeah, they, this is a uh, the total overdose. They're like, cool, that's enough for me. And I'm good. Off to the races. <laughs> just one medical examiner. That, that was all you needed. They were in the hospital just because they hit themselves in the bathroom. I did not expect people to jump in my DMs like this. If you were looking to shock me, you figured it out.